coming up on this episode of Belief Hole. This is the thing too, like her experience is a real experience. She saw something and she felt like she was communicated with. Right. But her story relates so much to stories that you hear of nature spirits from across the world and specific connections with shamans. Yeah, and I want to bring that up real quick. That was the interesting point. She said, a shaman came to bless. I think this was key to my experience looking back at it. Something that may have caused this ability for this thing to be there. And all of her friends just subconsciously walk around it. They can't see it. Yeah. But they just, for whatever reason, just move around it. And she makes that interesting point of like, I wonder how many of these things are around us all the time and we just move around them unconsciously and don't even know. Almost like a guardian angel. Talk about creeping real, that's pretty disturbing. Yeah, that's really disturbing. I could just feel that. And, to, and then to block it out. Would... Yeah, I feel like I've experienced that where like there's a memory and you feels like a repression, feels like a foggy, fuzzy thing. Like, yeah, something dark that happened that you just don't want to hold on to. It's yeah. like a protective mechanism. It reminds me of abduction cases. Like, is it something else keeping you from remembering? And this phenomenon of things disappearing is a common phenomenon. Yeah. Have you heard of Jot? The disappearing jot. object phenomenon? Things will disappear from a location and appear in a very obvious location. J-O-T-T, I think. So it stand for? I don't know. I just said it. Just know. on the trolley. Just on the trolley. <laughs> it's a happy <laughs> jaunt. Total sense. I was just on the trolley the other day. Very and relevant friend, to the phenomenon. I found a coin I'd been missing for years. I found a coin I'd been missing for years. I found a coin I'd been missing for years. It just reminds me of like, if there is this other realm where these things feed off of our fear. Right. She's hanging out with her boyfriend. Whatever is maybe around there is getting little little tastes of flavor. Like, ooh, she feels creeped out. Ooh, this is a good, I like this flavor. I'm going to follow her home and see if we can. And then maybe manifesting that right. clown to get her extra freaked and keep feeding. That's not crazy. I mean, what is it about this manifesting a doll? I mean, you know, we talk about these forces that feed off of fear. Right. And if they knew there's something falling her around and they knew that she was horrified of this. So mm-hmm. like, I'm just going to figure out a way to terrify this poor girl. Pretty Terry. Yeah. Spooky. That is spooky. Synchronicity, Sasquatch, Homunculus, Alien Races, Satanism in Hollywood, MK Ultra, Tartaria. There's like a whole. I've been watching this one guy. Close the door, in. Jeremy. Close your door. What's the uh, inner Earth disagreements? Ghost Dad. <laughs> I like that movie. Dogman. Bohemian Grove. Corey Feldman. Magicians are demons. Specters. Spirits. Sleep paralysis. Strange disappearances. Sky whale phenomena. Yes. Alternative history. Shadow people. Shh, quiet. I'm trying to say words with the mouth. It's getting dicey out there. Poltergeists. Oh, that's cool. Anunnaki. What is the moon? <laughs> Elf towers. I would never talk about. That's old. Y two K. Cover ups. Apocalyptic catastrophe. Vampire. Well, hello, hello. Hi. I'm Jeremy. Welcome to Believe Hole. John here. And I'm Chris. We are all brothers. Brothers united. We are in the hole together with you. And it's so special to have you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us for another episode. Uh, We are super excited today because this is going to be another, which I'm loving these more and more, guys. We're getting a lot of good stories. Yeah. Strange Listener Stories, Volume 5. We've had a lot of people contact us. It turns out there's a lot of paranormal things in the world. There's just a lot of weird stuff, man. Yeah, Yeah, there is. So many strange things that run the gamut from paranormal, supernatural, it's a veritable smorgasbord. The odd, the bizarre, the fringe. Yeah, I'm excited about the variety that we're getting of these stories. I think that makes them even more compelling, these episodes, because they go from abduction experiences to little gnome people. Gnome people. To, yeah. you know, the the uh, usual shadow person. In this episode, that's what you're doing? No, actually, good question. Those are previous ones, right? Right. Well, we'll have yeah. stories in here. We've got, I mean, this episode we're coming gnomes? up. gnomes? Uh, no, I saved the gnome stories, because I feel like we've done them recently. So. We have more yeah. gnome stories? Really? How many gnome stories have we had? It's a thing, man. These little guys are out there. <laughs> Okay, that reminds me, when we do our live stream, Mm -hmm. I got to go through that video again. One of them has this weird, creepy gnome-like thing that comes out of the corner. Oh, I've seen a few. We are going to do live streams. Um, This is kind of uh, out of the way a little bit, but we might as well mention it since it's coming up here. But we we have this episode and one more, and then we're taking a break. Yes. And we're going to be doing live streams for Patreon. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, okay. So if we have Patreon now, we'll keep Patreon. We're also going to be doing this other 
members platform that's going to be better for us and better for you, but it'll be your option to switch over if you want to or sign up there. But yeah, the point is we will be doing live streams and we're going to be reviewing videos. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll oh, be it's going to really be a great fun. time. Yeah, just chill, lay back, come hang out with us. And there's a lot of really awesome, crazy videos out there that I'm looking forward to kind of hearing people's thoughts about. Yeah. And, and there'll be a live stream, so you'll be able to interact. Mm-hmm. Chime and in. see our beautiful faces. And that's the thing. So it's subjective. <laughs> kind of videos we'll be re- reviewing, to get back to your point here, Chris, is the same kind of menagerie, the gamut that's run of these strange, bizarre things. Right. Because there are, like you said, like we can go from a UFO sighting to an abduction, which is just crazy, over to a, a creature coming out from under the bed, <laughs> to your grandfather <laughs> coming out of a toy chest. Grandpa. To uh, what we have today, which is, uh, I mean, several, but the one of the ones that stands out to me today is the... Uh, the blue glowing entity. Oh yeah, we've got a blue glowing entity in Costa Rica mountains. Oh cool. We've got manifesting clowns, clown dolls. Uh, we've That's got scary. we've got a wizard in Walmart. I'm excited. That's a great one. Uh, aisle seven. Can I get a price check on Eye of Newt? A wizard in Walmart. Oh, you'll see. You'll see, what? my friend. That sounds we've got, weird. We've got. <laughs> that sounds weird. We've got uh, creepy caves out in the White Mountains in northern Arizona. That's gonna be fun. And we've got a bunch of stuff. We've got uh, forgotten finds in ceiling tiles. It's kind of abstract. <laughs> Drop ceiling dread is what I. Would oh, that one it. is a creepy story. Secrets in the ceiling. That's how I titled it. That's a little better, I guess. Um, Secrets there's a bunch. in the ceiling. That's <laughs> no. Is that better than drop ceiling dread? I mean, that was mine. I like it. I, I mean, secrets, it's not like... It's, it could be anything. We'll save it. Like adultery is hidden up there. That is a weird the story. The devil's lettuce. I don't know if we'll get there. That's a great one. Anyways, we have a lot. Also, by the way, please, if you have sent in a story and you haven't heard back from us, email us again. Or if you message us through Patreon, let us know if we haven't gotten to it yet. Patreon is hard to go through all the messages. It's just not a good inbox. And our emails, I found one in the trash yesterday, which was weird. But if you've emailed us and you haven't heard back, email us again. Or if we've emailed you and you haven't responded to it, take a minute and do that. Because we want to make sure that our email account's working and not getting junked or something. Yeah. Because we sent out some emails uh, it seems like a regular thing that we send a response to someone and then we don't hear back. So I just want to make sure it's not an email issue. Yeah, normally I would be like, oh, they just you know, didn't really mind to respond. But a lot of the time the emails will say, let me know about this. Oh, they, they, would, they would respond. Yeah. That's just rude. It's absolutely <laughs> it's just rude. rude. You know, if they're listening to the show, they probably would. Yeah, I would. So I would think it probably went to junk, probably. Mm-hmm. probably. I'm going to assume that in my heart. We're not junk. We're <laughs> inbox material. We deserve better. Yeah, but check it out. Let us know if you haven't heard back from us because we have responded to, I think, every message at this point. There it is. Thank you. Do you guys want to start? Want to get into yeah. these stories? Well, I did want to mention, to kind of get us into it, uh, this this can conjure, this kind of thing I'm about to mention can conjure these kinds of strange experiences. I didn't heard of this. Uh, you didn't, wait, didn't heard of you this? You didn't heard of this? I said I hadn't, didn't You I? said didn't. I thought I hadn't said didn't. Or I thought, it, didn't I? I didn't heard of this. If you didn't heard of this, uh, this is interesting. So we got a message from uh, a listener of the show, Dorinda, and. Uh, there's something called rando nodding. Have you heard of this, John? I saw the the message, but I didn't look it up. Okay, so th- this is a quick uh, <laughs> quick definition from the. It inter- sounded funny to me for some reason. Well, I saw the message and I uh, just moved on with my day. Well, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it was like I I saw I read it, but I didn't look up rando nodding. I figured one of you guys would tell me what it was. It's better to imagine. Anyway. By the time I'm about to, they've already Googled it. So this just comes from the internet. First thing that pops up, this is from Junkie.com. Randonauting is the act of using the Randonautica app to travel to random places near you based on a, quote, quantum random number generator oh, yeah. and Mother Nature, quote, which gives specific coordinates for you to follow. Man, talk about, like, if you want, you know, whatever's out there to interfere with your destiny. Mm-hmm. Use something like this. You know, if you believe that things can involve themselves in your life, you know, there might be in another nearby dimensional plane or something. It's just an interesting idea that, like, what if there are things out there that can yeah. play with that, interfere with that number, and then it just plans for you to be somewhere at a certain time? I mean, I don't know. Like Final Destination, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, That's like a movie plot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's literally a movie plot. <laughs> well, I know, but, like, but it's used by a random number generator. It just kills people. Oh, yeah, like everybody on this app. Yeah, they're just like, oh, cool, let's play this game, and then it takes them to their death. It's like human death geocaching. It's like Final Destination with a number generator. Yeah. Cool. Geocaching. <laughs> Uh, so when you open the app, it starts by setting a radius and the generator will spit out coordinates for you to travel to. It claims that uh, it's influenced by the user's thoughts and consciousness. So it's, we talked about this in the last episode, the idea that your intention, your will can, which would be kind of hilarious if like you really wanted to go to like Burger King and then you use the app and it's like, go to Burger King. We <laughs> sensed it, you know, that seems, but you would just do that anyway. It'd be neater if it was like, go here and then you see like a dragon come from the sky. 
that's likely. I'd be interested to know if there's any real science behind this specific app and the actual quantum number generator, like what the, if that's really in a technology that's incorporated in the app or if it's just kind of a fun way of saying like it's just a random number generator. But it reminds me of what mom used to do. Do you remember that? Oh, with the pennies. Yeah, John, do you remember this? No. So when, after, shortly after mom got her driver's license, her and Daisy, when Daisy came up from Brazil, the exchange student program they were in, they'd drive around town and every time they hit an intersection, they'd stop, they'd flip a coin, a penny. Bing, 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 and then that would decide which direction they would that go. sounds fun. I, yeah. I kind of want to do that. Well, penny drives or penny hikes, but it's the same kind of idea where you basically let fate decide your direction and you end up discovering new places. I really want to do that today. Let's see after the show. I mean, just drive around the back roads of Clinton. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the problem is like, it'd take like three hours before we're like, oh, this is new. No, it wouldn't. I bet you we'd find new stuff pretty quickly. Just roads, even, that's even true. residential even like, roads. Yeah, even a neighborhood I've never driven yeah. down. That's a good point. I love taking old highways, like old state highways, and you go through all these towns you never knew were 15 minutes away from where you grew sounds up. sounds really, f I just, you know, because we're so like in technology. Yeah. Like if you were to just do that and just drive down roads. Mm -hmm. And be like, I'm going to just go to a new place. There's something really fun where you don't have to make that decision. Yeah. And it, it's done for you, but it still takes you to somewhere you have no idea where you're going. It sounds like a lot of fun. And it sounds like a way to kind of have unique experiences. Whether or not they turn into paranormal listener stories that you can send in. Probably It's not. neither here nor there. But it would be interesting to see if it's a, it could be a magnifying glass on like synchronicity. Yes. You know what I mean? Like what if you did this? Well, and they've like, done experiments with that before mm -hmm. with random number generators and like consciousness. But it's just a fun idea. And I'd like to try it. All right. Let's hear the first story, huh? Let's light it up. Yes, this comes from a cool gal, longtime listener of the show, Carla. So just to give you some basic background, she's a very outdoorsy lady. She's uh, been in the, in the woods a lot, been involved in forestry programs, has worked as a wilderness ranger, all these kinds of things. And she has multiple stories, at least one more story she might send in from Idaho, which I'm interested to hear. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, she was uh, working as an outbound instructor, I think, when this story occurred. Oh, does it say that? Yeah, she was Costa Rica with the Mountaineering Club, and then she worked as an outward bound instructor. Um, and then later she worked in the States in Idaho, right? She was a ranger in the Sawtooths. Yeah, but all this to say that she obviously, she's comfortable in the woods. I would, I would assume she doesn't get unsettled easily in the mm -hmm. wilderness. And this, in this situation, it even happens, what she experiences happens in a group. And that's kind of one of the interesting attributes to the story because not everyone experiences it in the group. Yeah, this is a very unique story, and that's why I want to do it first because it would be a good way to open up this episode with a punch. Let's do it. And she's a PhD, so keep that in mind when you hear the story. <laughs> Add some credibility. <laughs> Smart cookie. She ain't no kook. That's right. Hello, Belief Hole. I have a little story for you. Okay, so just a little bit of context. When I was 18, I started to seriously hike and backpack with the mountaineering club from my university. So many, many hours of wilderness experience. And the following is one of my stories in Costa Rica. Yes. Beautiful place mm -hmm. we've been. One time we were participating in an overnight quote-unquote adventure race in the forest and this forest where the race was taking place was magical to begin with. The organizers, interesting people to say the least, decided to invite this shaman to conduct an opening ceremony. It was really cool and I think it may have been key for my story to happen. At the end of the first day of the race, we took a break for the night. We were not carrying much, certainly not tents. I think we had some tarps in case of rain. And we never have campfires in the woods. We always try to be as leave no tracy as possible. <laughs> I like that term, <laughs> leave no tracy. Even though that was not a thing during that time and certainly not for us. Um, I think this was around 98 or 99. So without a fire, tents, just some tarps, my teammates and I set up a little camp. After dinner, we went down to a nearby creek to get some water and wash dishes and stuff. And we scattered around and I saw from the corner of my eye an elongated blue light. I turned to see it but I couldn't see it. I couldn't see anything up front. So I continued doing whatever I was doing and out of the corner of my eye, I saw it again. It was a being shaped as a tall man, but completely made out of blue light. 
Awesome. I turned again and I couldn't see it with my frontal vision. I could only see it with my peripheral vision. Weird. Yeah. I thought to myself, what on earth? I would have said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Then he talked to me in my mind's ears. <gasps> my mind's ears? I didn't hear it with my physical ears. It was more like telepathically. Oh, that's awesome. He told me, I'm here to protect you guys and also to make sure you don't cause any harm either. What? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Hear that. I didn't feel threatened, but many things were crossing my mind. <sighs> How cool is this? <laughs> this entity is here to protect us, so I shouldn't worry. But then I was like, wait, protect us from what? What's yeah. out there that we need protection from? Creepy. So many things were crossing my mind at that moment. And that is a fascinating story. We finished cleaning up and headed back to camp. He was standing on the side of the trailhead, and I noticed that my teammates were going around him. It's interesting. Yeah. Just as if there were a person standing on the way. Well, that's crazy. My guess is they did that unconsciously because no one said anything about seeing this being or had a funny look or seemed weirded out. They were just being their normal selves. So I wonder how many things we do unconsciously that are a result of energies or things around us that we can't perceive. Good thought. Anyhow, he followed us at a distance and stayed on the trail the rest of the night, just as he said he would do. And he was watching over us and watching us. I don't know if this is relevant to the story or not, but maybe some of the outdoor people could relate. The mountains or the forest, they either accept you or reject you. Some people don't have the best energy to them or the best attitude towards their surroundings or people and they come into the forest or the mountains and they are rejected. I can see that. I feel this is relevant to the story because this particular team was not my usual mountain people. There were some new peeps, as it often happened with the Outdoors Club from the university. You never knew who would show up. And you know how you sometimes say, time will tell? Well, time told. <laughs> and there was this individual who ended up being a nuisance, to say the least. And, you know, maybe the forest and its inhabitants needed protection from this person. But then, what did we need protection from? Yeah, that is a crazy story. What? Um, that's a really good story. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I have a lot of questions about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do have some. Do we get some follow? I emailed her some follow. Oh, I asked her more about like where it happened and stuff. Yeah, she said it was. Uh, she said, uh, "I feel the mountains are living places." She kind of said this oh, in this her video, cool, yeah, or in her in her story. I, I feel the mountains are living places and there is so much going on that we don't know. I hope you enjoy the story. Then she said it was in the mountains northwest of Heredia. Just outside of the city. It wasn't a very remote area. It was rural, but not remote. So it wasn't like it was 40 miles into in the, the middle jungle. of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it was a mix between restored forest and grasslands. And some areas were definitely primary pre mountainous rainforest. It looked like where Red Riding Hood met the wolf the first time, Ooh. just around the corner from Hansel and Gretel's witch house. LOL. Mysterious. It was a very dense forest with old growth and looked like it was out of a fairy tale. Incredibly beautiful. Dense canopy, a little understory. It's just interesting. I think when she talks about how the forest rejects, yeah, like what what does that what does that mean? I've heard that. Have before. You, you seen Fern Do you, Gully? Are those the people that go missing? Ooh, it's funny you well, say I that. I don't want to say that. Hold on, because that's really yeah, sad. No, I, don't, I mean, but I, I do wonder what the repercussions are. For not in all cases, but I'm sure in some cases. Maybe in some cases, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying everyone that goes missing was some bad person. Force, yeah, it decides. There's a really interesting story in uh, also in South America, or actually, it might have been yeah, it was South America somewhere near Brazil, but it was this guy who went down into the rainforest and I guess he went, it was sort of a similar thing where the shaman said like, the forest will either accept you or reject you. It's a really crazy story how like he went, um, I don't have any of this with me because uh, I was thinking about talking about it, but um, he basically finds himself lost in the jungle. Like he just wandered away from his, whatever he was doing with the, his team and wound up in the jungle completely unprepared, didn't know where he was. And it was all about like, 
the things he saw when he was out there that were unnatural and how he was able to get back to his place. I'll have to look up that story. Yeah. I kind of just led you into a story without any sort of story behind the actual introduction to it. But it reminded me that because the shaman in there warned him initially, like, you have to respect this place. If you don't, you might not return. Yeah. It's all about respect. And, you know, these kinds of ideas are... are I, this is the thing too, like her experience is a real experience. She saw something and she right. was, you know, she ha- felt like she was communicated with, but her story relates so much to stories that you hear of nature spirits or tree mm-hmm. spirits from across the world Yeah, that are in these places and specific connections with shamans. Yeah. And I want to bring that up real quick. That was an interesting point. She said at the beginning of the story, when they were about to do this race in the forest, a shaman came to bless the ceremony. It took place before, and she said, I think this was key to my experience looking back at it. Something that may have caused this ability for this thing to either be there or for her to see this thing. It was interesting, and I thought it was so fascinating that she only saw it out of her peripheral vision, and then she sees it standing in the path when they're all going to leave, and all of her friends just subconsciously walk around it. They can't see it. Yeah. But they just, for whatever reason, just move around it. And she makes that interesting point of like, I wonder how many of these things are around us all the time, and we just move around them unconsciously and don't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really cool. Depending on what it is, I guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In this case, it's cool. It's like a guardian guy. Yeah, that, helpful I, dude. that would be pretty, uh, I'd feel kind of special. Yeah. Almost like a guardian angel. Mm-hmm. So in my search uh, for something in Costa Rica and something to match this, I, I came across this one. This is actually in Brazil. Okay, so this is called the Curupira, or Inhabitant of the Woods. A nature spirit from the Tupi people of Brazil. The Curupira, or boy body, is a guardian spirit of the forest protecting it from the devastation of man. Boy body. <laughs> this fairy will allow anyone who hunts for food to do so with intent, but will cause no end of trouble for those who hunt for pleasure. <laughs> it has the ability to summon a hunter by calling out his name. Michael. That's creepy. Once the greedy hunter is confused and lost in the jungle, the Kurupira will lure him into the pitfalls and traps it has set throughout the jungle. Its high-pitched shrill whistle is enough to stun an adult, knocking him to his knees. The Kurupira is described as looking like a boy... Now, this is going to be very different from Carlos' description, but it's another nature spirit of protection. A boy with backward-facing feet, green teeth, large pointy ears, and hair made of living flames. I thought that because didn't she say that what she saw was glowing, Mm -hmm. right? That's another way to say blue light, hair made of living flames. I mean, this is obviously (laughs) not the same, but it is another kind of nature spirit. Interesting. Um, Occasionally, it will assume the form of a brocket, a frog, an old man, a very tall man. What, what? That's what she described. Oh, yeah. A tall man, right? Or a paca. It rides on the back of a wild boar and has a special fondness for the white-lipped pecaris and brocket deer. Although it wanders the wilderness freely and calls no particular location home, it routinely sleeps at the base of the kapuk tree. The mythology is confusing as to whether this is a singular entity or a race of fairies. Ooh. So, you know, every culture has some sort of nature guardian spirit. Yeah, some fern gully forest protective fairy spirits. Russia has the leshy. Scandinavia has them. Uh, I know Japan has several different like nature guardian spirits. He rattled that off like you knew You that. know the leshy? <laughs> like you just knew You're that. You're all familiar with the leshy, right? Yeah, you did no research. But yeah, so that's interesting. Like, I mean, just to experience something like that for yourself is pretty incredible. I would love to experience something like that. So thank you so much for sending that in, Carla. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, story. And when I was trying to find more stories like that, the one thing that I want to say now about being able to find corroborations about that is I found a lot of things related to ayahuasca. Right. Well, it makes sense. A lot of entities that people in shot, because it's also related to the shaman. In the Amazon down there, that's where people go for ayahuasca therapy, these kinds mm-hmm. of things. And they work with shaman and they would, will see things like the, uh, the mother, I think it's called the mother of the Amazon or the, the snake goddess. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the snake deity with an ayahuasca trip. Yeah. So it's basically a giant serpent. It's like shak, shakamama or shark. I wish I had that in front of me right now. Uh, but it's, it's something like that. Uh, but anyways, I, I, I want to do an episode at some point on, on ayahuasca and these shared serpent experiences. The one thing that I did find that connect is that it does have blue glowing scales. Oh. So another, I mean, that's a really stretch for, to make that connection. Anyways, we'll do that at some point because there's a lot of, there's a lot of fascinating mysteries down in the Amazon and down. Oh yeah, that's, in that's the, for sure. In the forests. Just as many mysteries as there are species of yeah. life. So thank you, Carla. Let's go to the next story. All right. This next story is called, I call Send in the Clowns. <laughs> This is a fun one. That is a lame title. The song name. Okay, how about Send in the Clown Dolls? 
Okay, with evil go. intent. With evil intent. Evil intent. Now, this story comes from Shailene. This happened to her back in 92 when she was in high school. <laughs> I went on a date one night with a bunch of other couples, probably around 10 to 12 high school kids total. We were at someone's house to eat and play games and then to watch a video. Because back then, you remember videos, guys? Oh, yeah. There was a bunch of movies to choose from, so everyone voted on which one to watch. The majority of the group chose the 1990 original Stephen King movie, It. Hi, Georgie and Pennywise, the Dancing Clown. <laughs> hey, Terry. Yeah. Actually, a uh, miniseries, right? Mm -hmm. TV miniseries? Yeah, Stephen King. Or um, Tim Curry. <laughs> yes. That's Pennywise. Hi, you Georgie. <laughs> they all float. Oh, great, great movie. I am not a fan at all of horror movies. I don't even like very many scary movies. So this really wasn't my idea of a great time. It really freaked me out. Later, when my date drove me home and dropped me off, it was well past midnight, and my whole family was asleep. I went upstairs to my room, and when I turned on my light, the first thing I saw, right in the middle of my bedroom floor, was a little toy clown doll that I had never, ever seen before. Okay, I'd be out of there. Yeah. As a side note, I always kept my bedroom really clean, and I was really particular about never leaving anything on the floor, so this little clown stuck out like a sore thumb. I had cold chills run up and down my body. My heart was racing. It might sound weird, but there was an evil feeling in my room. I feel like we're all familiar with that experience. No one in my family would have pulled a prank on me. They aren't the kind of people that would ever do something like that at all. Plus, they had no idea what movie we had watched on my date. And there's no way my date would have or could have put that in there. He was a really nice guy who wouldn't scare me like that. I grabbed, I love this part, I grabbed a piece of clothing to pick the clown up. To pick the clown up with. And ran downstairs to throw it in the kitchen garbage. I was really scared, so I slept in my sister's room that night. The next morning, I had my family look at the clown. None of them had ever seen it before. I had only one younger sibling, who was also a teenager, and she didn't have toys anymore, so it didn't belong to her. Overall, it was really odd and very creepy, and it still gives me the chills whenever I think about it today. Isn't that bizarre? I like that she, like it was a, like it was contagious. She had to use like a, <laughs> a piece of clothing to pick it up and throw it in the trash. Yeah, I love that part. She's like, I used a Ew. shirt. That's like just a little detail that makes it sound way more credible. Like, because... I mean, I can understand that. Yeah, you're like, I don't want to touch it. Yeah. I don't yeah. know where this thing came from, what kind of evil is on it, that kind of thing. Which, and so I, in looking for some sort of, just, I wanted a related kind of story to this kind of thing. And I found this great article uh, titled, Woman was so spooked by an inflatable clown blowing into her garden, she now sleeps with a knife. And it's what? the weird thing about this is it's very synchronistic with her story, but it's related to the new movie it as opposed to the old one. Renee Jensen of Harrington Park in New Jersey was left badly shaken after the cartoonish doll made its unexpected appearance as she sat with her boyfriend next to their pool on Saturday. The inflatable <laughs> appears to be based on Pennywise, the evil clown from Stephen King's It book and subsequent movie adaptations. This gets more interesting than you think it would. <laughs> That's so silly. <laughs> that isn't a silly looking clown doll there? That's not super scary to me. It's, it's like one of those like posh, yeah, yeah. big eyed things. But weird writing on its head. Notice the spray paint on its forehead. This gets more interesting. Uh, the inflatable appears to be based on Pennywise. He famously descends from the sky on a balloon, just like the toy that appeared in Jensen's garden. It has red, quote, blood around its mouth and strange black marks spray painted across its forehead. Jensen, who works as a Reiki healer, said, I happened to be looking up and we just saw this object come out of the sky. It was scary because it just came out of nowhere. I think anybody, even if it was on your front porch and somebody rang your bell and ran off, you'd be disturbed. Jensen said the doll came from too high to have been thrown in. So this thing just comes out of the sky. They're looking up and it's like this small thing. a little parachute or something? I said a balloon. <laughs> it was dropped from a plane. <laughs> um, and she is certain it had not been trapped in the tree branches, leaving her convinced its appearance could be a sign of impending sinister events. Jensen called police because of the writing on the doll's forehead. That's what's weird. There's like almost like um, spray like number, painted number of figures. We'll have this image in the show notes. They came by to take a report but refused to take the doll with them. What? I didn't read that. Prompting Jensen to burn it. The cops are so like, the cops are like, I'm not taking that doll. <laughs> burn that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Came down from the sky. 
crazy. Torch it. Um, Jensen says the strange encounter has left her in no mood to see the latest installment of the It series, with the homeowner now sleeping with a blade to try and give herself some peace of mind. See, okay. a blade? Like a knife. She's sleeping with a knife. Yeah, oh, that, that sounds very safe. Me, yeah. Yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't want a gun. I don't want a fatal uh, instrument know, next to me. Especially if, somebody's if coming you're at me. a woman. Like that can <laughs> they can't wow, handle the, John. They can't handle knives. No, I'm, I'm joking. But, they handle them in the kitchen all the time. But I mean, like if there's a large attacker that comes in your room, yeah. like mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to just have a knife. Unless I, you could have it, like you know, if you could. I guess that's last resort. You got to get pretty yeah. close to someone. But yeah, it would be scary to see like someone hysterical waving at you with a knife to you know. That'd be a good way to defend yourself in that. Anyway, instance. I mean, the clown coming out of the sky is pretty, pretty bizarre. That's kind of the focus of the story. Weird Not markings on its head. Yeah, but you know, this is could be a possibility, but uh, with Shailene's experience, it just reminds me of that, like, if there is this other realm where these things feed off of our fear, right? She's hanging out with her boyfriend, and whatever is maybe around there is getting little little tastes of flavor. Like, ooh, she's she feels creeped out. Ooh, this is a good. I like this flavor. I'm going to follow her home and see if we can. And then maybe, I mean, this is out there but potentially like manifesting that right. clown to get her extra freaked and keep feeding. I was just going to say, I mean, what is it with That's not crazy. clown stuff in general? And this manifesting, like if we take both of these stories or either of them at face value, it's just a bizarre, like what is it about this manifesting a doll? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm more inclined to believe Shailene's encounter was more supernatural because I th- th- when you have the outs, literally an outside event as in like an outside area, your backyard, who knows how that thing may fall off an airplane. I don't know. W- weird with the markings on its forehead, but still strange. But the fact that in Shailene's story was in her bedroom on the floor, and it sounds like her family wouldn't have done this. Yeah. You know? And this is pre-cell phone. So unless her friends called him up on a landline and said, hey, your daughter just watched this scary yeah. movie. Make sure you put a clown in her room and then never tell her over the next two decades. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to know. You're a kid. I mean, oh yeah. I was just thinking like, you know, we talk about these forces that feed off of fear. Right. And if they knew, like, there's something following her around, and they knew that she was horrified of this, you know, exactly. she said she really didn't like scary movies. Scary movies. She didn't not, you know, sense that. And so, like, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna figure out a way to terrify this poor yeah. girl. That's exactly what I said. Did you? Yeah, you were on your phone. I said that exactly. <laughs> Did you like, just say that? I just said that literally. <laughs> Get off your phone. <laughs> but I'm glad you I'm, underscored I'm it. I'm here about 80 percent of the time. <laughs> I think I've done a pretty good job. You I have. mean, it used to be like I'd listen to you about 20 percent of the uh-huh. time, and I've worked my way up. I used to glaze over every time you spoke at all, uh-huh. just by nature of being your older brother. Well, this we know, yeah. So I've made no, progress. I appreciate it. I appreciate you have. So this uh, clown story, Jeremy, reminds me of your expansion. Aren't you doing something related to toys for the expansion? <laughs> oh, yeah, John. So I came up with this concept. So we're getting close to Christmas, right? I wanted to do something in that vein for this episode. So if you guys have children out there, or maybe you were a child at one time, you probably relate to, you know, the idea of like getting excited for Christmas presents and toys. People still do, I think, even as adults. Yeah, yeah, Because I've heard some tales. Some of the uh, creepy stories of either things kids got for Christmas or maybe the toys themselves, there was something not quite right. So we're going to pick some strange stories from the stocking this year. Oh, and do some uh, bizarre tales of Christmas and just get some interesting, maybe some creepy... Uh, Krampus? Krampusy. I didn't want to go down the Krampus hole because that's this whole episode, but there are a lot of bizarre things about Christmas or about that time of year. Right. Yeah, there's always been a weird mix of fascination with like the macabre and... yeah. And you Christmas. know, in horror movies and stuff mm-hmm. where they mix the, like, the, the joy genres. of Christmas with... That's very true, dude. I didn't think about that. Like, Gremlins takes place during mm-hmm. Christmas. Well, uh, you think about the history of Christmas and the, the the wrapping with the pagan, with the Judeo-Christian sort of mm-hmm. ideology of, of Christian, the, the origins of those, and some of the darker Germanic, well, like you mentioned, Krampus, darker traditions involving Christmas. There is always, and I think part of it's the year. I think the, the everything's dead Everything's quiet. Yeah, this time of year has an eerie, magical mystery yeah, to that, it. In February, there's something weird about like the darkest, darkest. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's when that that weird thing happened with me and Jake, where that the thing oh, that the kept whistler. pinching Jake. It just had like that time of year freaks me out. That, in your yeah. house, right? When you the whistling yeah. in your house, mm-hmm. and it is so quiet. It's just cold and dead, and like I have really weird nightmares around that time mm-hmm. of year. It's like. The death of the world. Yeah, I was gonna say it feels like the end of the world in a, in a weird way. Like yeah. tempor- it's, a temporary it's a temporary end of the world. It's the cycle of night in our, you know, right. calendar year. Before renewal of next year. There's there are so many cool topics we could do about that. Whether, like you said, Chris, it goes back to the pagan, creepier, more supernatural origins of, of the holidays this time of year. Or, yeah, just like the feeling of this time, like you're saying, John. Yeah. Like the, the eerie um, mystery 
mm-hmm. uh, of the wintry dark. The cold burr. Yeah. So we're going to have all kinds of stories and anecdotes coming up in the expansion that embody that feeling. So stick around for that, guys. We should take a little break, I think. Yep. Why don't, we, do why don't we play a clip of the expansion episode for you uh, listeners out there and get a taste of what's coming up in the expansion. Sounds good. See you in a bit. Expansion episode, Strange Stories from the Stocking and Dark Toys. Preview. Access granted. The thing I want to do, the reason I brought up all the Victorian tradition of telling these ghost stories and stuff is because I want to tell a real story. I want a real, yeah. creepy, mysterious Christmas mystery. Let's hear it. I want to hear it. A Christmary. A Christmary. Thank you, John. <laughs> so everybody pour yourself some, uh, some spiked eggnog. Spiked eggnog. Light that Christmas chimney fire. Hang the mistletoe and invite your lady or fella over because we're about to get Christmas creepy. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the story begins. The house was the scene of a merry Christmas party and young Oliver was in good spirits as he sang with his girl. Altogether, perhaps 20 people were gathered around the piano, no six-foot distance, (laughs) singing hymns and gay holiday songs. Nothing foretold of the grim tragedy which was to come. Around 10, Oliver's mother, who was preparing supper, called to him to fetch some water from the well. Oliver, my boy, fetch me some water, would you? He smiled and excused himself from Miss Hirsch, and walked out into the calm night. That was the last time any person saw him on this earth. About five minutes later, a horrible cry for help, so terrifying that it could be heard above the singing, split the serenity of the happy occasion. For a second, the group in the house froze, looking at each other in astonishment. Then with Tom Lurch in the lead, they dashed out into the night. The cry sounded again, only this time it was fainter. Help me! It's got me! Oliver's terror-stricken voice called again, this time from a position above their heads. Help me! It sounded as though the voice was coming from the sky above them. Anxiously, friends and family scanned the moonlit sky, but there was nothing to be seen. Only the voice could be heard. For almost five minutes, the voice continued to call. Sometimes it was loud, then soft, now close at hand, now feeble and far away, but always from the sky, never on the ground level. Weird. Men got ladders and climbed in trees, poked in the snow, and even lowered the lantern down the well. Oliver could not be found. Once more, it uttered a soul-tingling plea for help. help After that, the voice was never heard again. Weird. Creepy, huh? That's crazy. I mean, it, if this is a real account, I mean, it's just weird to think that there is a man who's somewhere in the sky yelling down for help. I think it was either a dragon. Ooh, it's funny you say that, John. <laughs> Snally Gaster. Funny you say that. Snally Gaster. <laughs> We're back. Welcome back. We say that. It's usually like that. I know. It I really say is. welcome back and go, welcome back. It's, you know, it's that routine. It's predictable. It makes people feel comfortable. Like the world is in the right place. It is. All is well. Especially in a spooky episode like this. Oh, this next story is not very spooky. It's more um, fun. I think this is a, it's a sweet story. It's kind of whimsical. And I think you need to read this one, John. This comes from a fellow named Johnny. This is called The Walmart Wizard. Walmart Wizard. This is weird. The Walmart wizard. Okay. I wanted to share my weird story of American mayhem straight from the hellhole known as the Walmart. <laughs> it's true. The lighting sucks your soul out. It does. It eats you alive. Prices are great. <laughs> from China. All right. <laughs> About 15 years ago, my wife and I were leaving one such Walmart after a less than optimal but par for the course trip when we bumped into an old high school friend of mine. A few minutes into our chat, an acquaintance of my friend passed by 
and as they exchanged pleasantries, my wife and my attention became fixed upon an old Micronesian man and what appeared to be his young grandson. The boy was carrying a helium-filled balloon, and he was busying himself by checking the coin returns of all the machines he passed while the old man sat down on a bench. A few seconds after the old man sat down, the little boy released his balloon. He immediately ran to the old man and pointed to the balloon that was now about 10 feet in the air and fast approaching the tall ceiling of the lobby. The old man, in a very nonchalant manner, began giving the balloon the come here motion with his finger. <laughs> I immediately began to laugh because it's hilarious, but my laugh soon ceased and I was amazed as the balloon started floating back to the old man. What? I looked at my wife and as we were confirming what we had seen with each other, we turned to witness the very same thing again, oh only this time the balloon wasn't nearly as far away and it seemed to float sideways to the old man. Anyway, I'm still not convinced that what my wife and I witnessed was supernatural, but it has become a favorite story of ours and just wanted to share. Thanks again, Johnny. I love that story. Yeah, it's cool. Just imagine this old, old little man going, come here, balloon, back to my grandson. I mean, I, well, yeah, yeah, like, what is he? <laughs> Does he have a balloon magnet in his finger? <laughs> How do you explain that? I mean, I, obviously, it sounds like he's probably saying, like, you could explain it away by just luck and chance that he happened to make this movement and then the balloon came to him. But I like to think that he had some sort of Micronesian mystical power. Yeah, I was looking at, I was just Googling while you're, while you're reading that story. The uh, Some people online were asking about, someone's like, I really need help. I need information on uh, black magic being used in... in uh, Walmarts? No, <laughs> in Micronesia. <laughs> and, see uh, some interesting characters in Walmarts, that's for sure. I mean, if you think about all the witchery and stuff in the world, I'm sure... If there is magical powers, that seems like a pretty basic one to have. Telekinesis? That's pretty no, awesome. pulling though. balloons back to you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's pretty standard. Yeah. yeah. Only I mean, balloons. That doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to do. I mean, if, if there's magical powers in the universe, like pulling a balloon back is going to be... it's so light. It's already yeah. floating. You know, there's not a lot of friction. You know, what is... Yeah, telekinesis is when mm -hmm. you can... That seems like because there's it's very little physical mass. Right. That would be an easy one. It'd be to like a bubble. On. It'd be like a like blowing a soap bubble and then like using yeah. your. All right. Mm, yeah, here it comes. I think that's got to be possible. I think we we have proven that this is the well, this actually, is natural event. Case, case in point. Apparently, uh, this is some some stone wall famous out there in Micronesia. Oh, I saw that. Oh, it's, it's part of a group of islands that How were did you artificially built. Because I, I looked into this oh, before the episode. Do you know the story? No. So okay. Or so they thought maybe it was sound technology. How did they ever get the stones like we talked about in the last episode? How did they ever get the stones like that out here to the islands and up there on that wall? I asked. Uh, Joss replied, "What is this from?" <laughs> yeah, what do you, what do we... this is from CruisingWorld.com. Oh, okay, so it's a destination stop. Oh, uh, the archaeologists believe the stones must have been transported by giant raft from quarry sites far away and hoisted by an army of workers, but they haven't found a single bit of evidence that supports this crazy theory. Where we heard this before, uh, and wouldn't you believe? Quote. We believe these stones were lifted into the air and flown here by Hunani, priests with special powers, to move mm -hmm. balloons in Walmart. This power isn't magic, <laughs> as you might call it, but more of a form of enlightenment, a mental control of matter. Oh, this is Micronesia. Dude, maybe this guy is a Hunani priest, perhaps. That's probably what, what it was. Interesting. Thank you, cruisingworld.com. <laughs> Shout out. And thank you, Johnny. Yay! Yeah, thank you, Johnny. That's a great story, man. Next time you tell your story at your cocktail party, you can add that little juicy nugget of these uh, Hunani priests, is that what they're called? Yeah. Micronesia, who built this. The islands, these artificial islands that were created hundreds or thousands of years ago are amazing. If you ever want to look them up, they are crazy. They built like tidal canals, but they built, like Jeremy said, just like we've covered many times before in these ancient civilization episodes where they have these giant megalithic rock structures. These aren't quite as big, but the fact that they're brought there and built into artificial island walls and basically out in the ocean, you've got these artificially oh, created weird. structures. Yeah, really interesting. Now. It's beautiful too. Graham Hancock did a whole presentation on it, which we'll link in the show notes if I can find it. Man, so many links in the show notes. Cool. Well, yeah, thank you, John. That was a, that was a great story and took us in a weird tangent. I wasn't expecting for this episode. Yeah. I like it. Next. <laughs> <laughs> John, All right. You're a great, like, control Next master. one, please. Yes. Ding, ding. Next, please. All right. This next story comes... Cave com Tracers. That's what it's called. It is. Mm -hmm. This story comes from Denise. And this one we've I've been hanging on to for a while. We've got such a backlog of stories, but I wanted to get some more info from her, so I've been hanging on to it. Is that picture on the bottom hers? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Now that's going to come into the story here. Jerry, you want to you read? Yeah, I would love to. Do it. 
When my husband and I were dating, we once went to the White Mountains in northern Arizona for a weekend camping trip, just the two of us. One day we decided to take a short hike through the forest while talking about all the spooky things you can talk about while being what feels like completely alone in the woods. Skinwalkers, alien abductions, <laughs> missing people and corpses, you know, all the good stuff. This was public land, located about an hour from Sunrise Ski Resort. As we were walking, we came across a, we'll say 20 by 20 gated in-ground cave. What do most normal people do? We followed in the footsteps of our predecessors and crawled through the hole in the fence to see what was down there. The cave was wide for about 10 feet. Then it got super narrow and cold. The caves are cold, not a big deal, but we're in the middle of the woods. We've been talking about spooky things. We hadn't seen anyone in a couple of hours, and then in the middle of the forest, there was a fence. We decided enough is enough, and we should head back up to camp. But first, we need a picture. My hubby sets up the digital camera. This was about 12 years ago. People still carried around cameras. And we settle down on a rock with our backs to the cave. First couple of pictures are screwy. Half of our heads are cut off. The camera fell a couple of times while we were waiting for the timer. Only one of us would be in the picture or one of us would blink. We probably took 20 pictures of ourselves in front of this cave. Finally, we get one we're both happy with. After checking ourselves out for a minute, we look at the cave behind us. And there's a light that appears to be flying out of the cave. The camera captured what I can only describe as a, quote, tracer, where you can see where the light originated. And as it was moving, it created a trail of where it was and when the camera went off, the brightest spot. We boogied out of there right quick and felt like someone was watching us the whole time we walked back to camp. Yeah, creepy. Yeah. That'd be creepy to take If that, you feel that. And, and there's you, a picture there. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I feel weird. This, there's something creepy. And then you take a photo and like, it's exactly what you were, you know, just evidence. Yeah, it to, just confirms that it happened. Yeah. Well, the picture in the show notes, but yeah, it is definitely something flying through there. I mean, you could say maybe it's, I, I always hear the explanation for these sorts of things. It's, it's a bug close to the camera, so it's blurry. That's not a bug, though. But it looks illuminated. And so the cave, like, is bo- kind of below to the left of yeah. there? Okay. You have to have some nards to go down there in the middle of nowhere. With no it looks around. like it's going in the cave almost and not coming out. Just, oh, wow. I didn't, you know, I didn't look at it that way, but it could be. Oh, like going behind them and deeper into the cave. Yeah. I mean, if you look, the brighter part is going towards the cave, you know? That's just what it looks like. Yeah, towards like behind him, you mean? Doesn't necessarily, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or it's going, it wants to be in the shot. Maybe. It's flying up close. That's the thing. Like, so could this, you know, I guess caves are kind of notorious for having orb photos, Mm -hmm. these kinds of things. Uh, But this is not dust, right? Right. And there is the idea, like, is this something spirit-based? Could this be something that actually lives, we just don't understand and see inside the cave? Maybe it reaches to the inner earth. Well, That's another kind of, you know, (laughs) life coming out. Well, this place is a strange place. The White Mountains in Arizona, a lot of crazy stuff goes on. A lot of Bigfoot sightings, a lot of ghost stories. Arizona is a kind of a magical place to be Absolutely. A lot of vortexes. You know what happened? This is interesting because if you notice in her story, do you remember where she said this took place? White Mountains, Arizona? Yeah, but exactly where? This was public land located about an hour from Sunrise Ski Resort. So I Googled this to mm-hmm. see what was within an hour. You know what happened an hour from Sunrise Ski Resort? Travis Walton was abducted. Oh, really? Fire in the sky. Yeah. In the White Mountains. He was at the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest, which is an hour. So I don't know if it was the, if it was an hour in that direction, but I thought that was an interesting anecdote. Well, in that area, like all over, it seems like there's potential for... Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But I meant stuff. specifically an hour. This might have been exactly where right. he was abducted. We should find out if it was east or west. I think um, the, I think the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest is an hour east of the ski resort, well, I think. What's kind of interesting is that movie, Missing 411, The Hunted. Yeah. David Pilates' sequel. Right. Awesome movie. Check it out if, if you haven't seen it yet. But it seems like every story he covered, there was just like cases within that area. Yeah. There would be like five, ten cases of people within a certain radius of each other. Oh, yeah. And there was like some very paranormal stuff in that movie. It wasn't just like people missing. It oh, absolutely. Like, That's what kind of makes so, it. I mean, it, it seems like even if it wasn't that hour that way, mm-hmm. you know, there's hot spot areas. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, the White Mountains in general are, is this right. mysterious place that has all these strange occurrences. Yeah, I was looking at uh, the map too. And right outside of Sunrise Park, a little ways out, I guess maybe 20 minutes, half hour is Mount Baldy. Like, why is that familiar? That's that's a missing 401 case. 
Oh, really? Mount Baldy, oh, that's which right. is just right. That's right near there. there too, right near that ski resort. Yeah, and there's a there's a boulder field. I think was part of the story where someone went missing, um, and I think was actually found. But it was one of those stories. I think where the person reappeared, a place where they had searched and searched. And there's some really weird stories in that missing four one one. They're yeah. kind of popping in my head right now. We should do an episode on that again. We could do just those just the stories. Yeah. Like it's there's some really really bizarre. Like just like how I, how could that possibly happen? Yeah, I'm thinking about that one hiker that ended up like. It's just so many bizarre things that happened in the story. Like he like the distances he yeah traveled. He, he and, would have had to taken his shoes off and walk through the snow for, for like miles and miles. It's a and, common thing with those. And then he was like within a visual sight of like these homes. Yeah, I remember that story. He had like Didn't backpack go that way. full of food. Yeah, and then he died. You know, ten miles away from where he was originally supposed. Just things that just right. made no sense. And then it at seemed all. he would have passed by places he could have found sanctuary. Oh, yeah. and just didn't go there. Yeah, like the whole thing just was just like, why did that happen? Yeah, he finds. It's the most fascinating disappearance that, cases. Yeah, that was a really, really weird one. There's a whole bunch of good ones on there. Yeah. I mean, not good for the people, but definitely Compelling. fascinating. Yeah, confounding. It's a good word for him. Yeah. Uh, do we want to find out what's in the ceiling? Do you guys want to go there? Secrets in the yeah, ceiling? Yeah, this is a good one too. All right, John, you want to do this one? Sure. Secrets in the ceiling. I like alliteration. This is Andrea. <laughs> Drop ceiling dreadfuls. Yes, thank you, Andrea. I've had weird things happen to me and around me since I was a child. Since I bought my first home about five years ago, I'm now 31, things have finally calmed down. But before that, every single place I've lived in has had strange occurrences. Most of it has been related to sleep paralysis. And while some of those have been pretty terrifying, I can at least chalk that up to a scientific explanation that has affected a lot of people. That's one of the things that drew me into your podcast is knowing I'm not the only one. It's the things that happen when I'm awake, fully awake, that have always bothered me the most. What even prompted me to email you guys tonight was having dinner with my husband and his brother and my cousin. My husband's brother is married to my cousin, so if y'all can't tell by now, I'm from the South. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, my cousin and I were talking about some of the crazy things that happened to me in my 20s when I lived alone. Like I said, weird things happened in my childhood, and in my teen years, I tried to write it off as an overactive imagination. Then things flared back up in my 20s. Other than intense sleep paralysis, I would experience things like my bed shaking while I was awake, things going missing like just random stuff, seeing orbs, something pulled my pillow twice one time, I know that, and a clock was moved in my house. That's what me and my cousin were initially talking about at dinner was the clock incident. When I lived in an apartment, I had a heavy Victorian clock on the wall that I discovered was moved across the room one morning. I tried so many ways to explain it being moved. There was construction in the apartment building at the time, so maybe it fell, but it would have had to fall straight down and roll across the wall, turn a corner and continue rolling, <laughs> then land face up propped against another wall on the other side of the room. Sounds like Did I sleepwalk and move it? I've thought that might be a possibility, but I've never sleepwalked in my life, never in my childhood, and I've been with my husband for seven years, so surely by now he would know if I did. That's what we were talking about at dinner when I brought it up. The missing objects at that apartment. It was a pair of scissors and a spatula. That's when she mentioned that I had found them, and a memory came creeping back that I guess I've suppressed for years. I said... I was in the shower when I found them, wasn't I? She goes, yeah. I said, they were in the ceiling, right? She goes, I'm so sorry, I thought you remembered. I was so sick to my stomach because I truly cannot believe I blocked out this whole crazy ass memory that's now been flooding back. That stuff went missing in my apartment when I lived alone and I just happened to look up while taking a shower one day and noticed that one of the ceiling tiles was off kilter. Oh, so weird. I'm pretty sure I had to get a stool to reach the tile. Honestly, the memory is still kind of fuzzy. But when I lifted the tile in the crawl space, there was my fucking scissors and spatula that went missing. <gasps> Did I sleepwalk and put that stuff there? I really don't think I would have had the capability in my sleep to get out a stool and everything to put something in my shower ceiling. That is weird. Yeah. And those things went missing months between each other. Sleepwalking is the only logical explanation, but I think this goes beyond logic. 
I still can't believe I completely blocked it out of my memory for so long after all the other crazy stuff I've remembered happening. My cousin even brought up the first time we watched the movie Paranormal Activity, and when they pull that picture out of the crawl space, I had to leave the movie theater because it was so eerily similar to what I had experienced. Well, I had completely forgotten that until tonight, as in I remember being upset and leaving the movie, I guess I had just blocked out why. I have rewatched that movie so many times and that scene has always bothered me, and I never knew why. It's like a weird puzzle piece I forgot I had has fallen into place, and I truly don't know what is more upsetting, the fact that I found the missing stuff in the ceiling of a shower, or the fact that I so completely repressed the memory. Yeah, bizarre. Because things have been quiet for so long, I do get a little nervous talking about it, but I couldn't help myself to email you guys and get some of this off my chest. Thanks for the listening ear, and any opinions you all have on this would be much appreciated. Creep it real, Andrea. <laughs> well, that salutation. Creep it real. Can we use that, Andrea? Talk about creeping it real. That's pretty disturbing. Yeah, that's really disturbing. Especially, yeah, the shower one is... I can just feel that. Yeah. Feel the feeling of like... And, and then to block it out. The would, blocking out, yeah. And then... Yeah, I feel like I've experienced it where like you, there's a memory and you feel... It reminds me of that story that we told before when we were really little on Stonewood. We lived on Stonewood Street. Everybody arguing and that feeling of that building up and then like all of a sudden like the presence in the windows looking in at us while people were arguing... Like it was feeding on it. But the feeling of that feels like a repression, feels like a foggy, fuzzy thing. Like yeah, something dark remember. that happened that you just don't want to hold on to. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a protective mechanism. Or it reminds me of abduction cases. Like, is it something else keeping you from remembering? Of course, you know, yeah, it could be like... Like uh, memory suppression. Right. Sounds like. And, you know, she's saying things like, you know, she of course she's considering like, did I sleepwalk this and that? Which definitely like, you know, a disturbed sleep pattern. People do weird things when they're sleepwalking. Absolutely. That's true. Especially, you know, I have no idea if she's ever taken Ambien or anything like that. But yeah, that's when things get crazy. But like she said, her she's been married for seven years. Her husband's never right. seen her sleepwalk. She doesn't seem to have any sort of history. Exactly. Yeah. And this phenomenon of things disappearing appearing is a common phenomenon. Well, there's a phenomenon that you guys have, have you heard of JOT? I forget the, what it stands for, but it's the the disappearing object phenomenon. Things will disappear in, from a location and appear in a very obvious location. It's uh, it's really interesting. There's a really good book on it called JOT, J-O-T-T, I think. That's what it's it. called. I don't know. I just said it. Just know. on the <laughs> trolley. Just on the trolley. <laughs> yeah, it's a happy JOT. Total sense. I was just on the trolley the other day. Very and my relevant friend, to the phenomenon. I found a coin I'd been missing for years. Um, I do want to do an episode on that sometime, but it, it kind of reminds me of that. But yeah, just the, it's disturbing. The idea of, of yeah. like r suddenly remembering yeah. that there was a moment so bizarre that you well, looked up in your right. shower and you see a tile just slightly askew and you see yeah. there's objects I've been looking for. But it's so unsettling that your mind repressed that. That's what's crazy. Oh, is that yeah. she left the, my favorite uh, anecdote from that story is that she left the movie theater. It always disturbed her that scene and she yeah. never knew why until she was reminded and that that was just, it was obviously, so, it was obviously very upsetting. She wouldn't have just forgot that. It was upsetting. Especially she forgot it for a reason. Alone too, that'd be creepy. Yeah. Hmm. Cause you just know, like if it's not me, something else is doing it. Yeah. Ugh. And that clock that rolled, would right. have had to roll down the hallway turn and then. Well, I mean the, the only logical explanation is sleepwalking. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's not that, then, well, I'm saying the oh, logical, yeah. like, you know, real world yeah, explanation, but yeah, it doesn't seem likely that that's what it was. If it's not that. Not one. to me, sir. Not to me. Maybe it's elves. <laughs> Shape-shifting machine elves. <laughs> Could be fairies. Let's take another break. Let's do it. All right. Thank you, Andrea. When we come back, we are going to dive into a pretty compelling case after the accident, which is pretty compelling experience. And then if we have time, maybe one or two more tales of intrigue. Ooh, the woods behind the guy's house. I want to tell you about that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Time for a break. Jeremy needs to <laughs> put mouth, his brain back in. My mouth in. wasn't working. <laughs> the woods behind that guy's house. I don't house, like you was, anymore. Was <laughs> oh, you mean you liked me one time? That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. All right, guys. We come back. It'll just be me and John. Jeremy has Bye. been kicked off the show. <laughs> well, Any last words? Just throw him out the window. I'm happy to leave. I'm going to put you in a ceiling tile <laughs> and then forget about you. I'll do my own show. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, bye.
right, we're back. Welcome back, guys. Um, I do want to say, well, since we've just come back from the break, um, good moment to mention, thank you, everyone who's been sharing the show. Uh, really yeah. helping us grow. It's really important for us um, in order to keep doing this, and it really means a lot. And specifically, I was going to say, if any of you guys are on Instagram, we've been getting some Instagram story shares lately. If you do that, I will share it back, and I'll add a, a cool little like skeleton GIF on it and make it extra fun, reshare it. Uh, cool. It's a fun way to like interact with the show, but also sh- spread the word of the whole. Spread the whole. Spread the whole. But we've taken all the, you know, <laughs> any weirdness out of that term. <laughs> spread the it's whole. It's just so natural now. <laughs> That's true, yeah. The first like eight times you're like, spread the whole, okay. Yeah. And now we're just like, just spread the whole. It is weird. Yeah, now it has zero like uh, sexual content. Well, now you just reminded everyone. Yep. Spread the whole. Brought it back up. But thank you guys for doing that. It really, really means a lot to us. So we have much love for you. Anyway, Chris, please continue. All right, this next story, uh, this comes from Matt. And this just reminds me of, I think a lot of people have this experience when you're young. John, you probably have had this experience. Um, you just have a place in your memory, that place in your childhood that you always have sort of has an, a strangeness surrounding it. That just seems like maybe a strange zone of environment. Like like mysterious, mysterious mystical? Mysterious, supernatural, just has an, an Dark. aura or an air about it. You know what I'm talking about? You Can you th- think of any place like that in your in your life? I can. I feel like for me it was uh, the bench, Clinton Elementary. Remember the one oh, tucked yeah. beneath the trees? Mm-hmm. just seemed out of time for some reason. It was a um, special place to go to. Yeah. This story from Matt is sort of like that. The weird woods behind my childhood home. When I was a kid, my dad's job moved us around to quite a few different states. He was a plant manager for several plastics companies, and it took us to a lot of cool places. One of those places was Pennsylvania for about six months when I was around age nine. I still can hardly believe it was only six months when I talked to my parents about it, because I've got so many memories of that big blue house. There were concrete steps out front that led to a sidewalk, and across the street, it was just woods as far as the eye could see, sloping downhill almost into a valley. I used to stand at the edge of the woods and throw sticks and rocks down the hill. I feel like these woods saw a lot of action. Once I was sitting on the steps out front, and I saw a guy walk into them with a hacksaw, and shortly after, came walking back out in quite a hurry. The hacksaw was missing, and he just had one hand covering his other hand, which was bleeding heavily. I kind of freaked out and asked him if he was okay. He ignored me and kept walking. Obviously nothing super weird, but just, that seems pretty super weird. Maybe not paranormal. Right, I think that's what he meant. But just an example of some of the strange things that happened in and around those woods. One day I was standing at the edge of the woods, throwing sticks down the hill. I heard some rustling and didn't think much of it. I'd often see critters running around down there, but this time the rustling turned into really loud stomping. I was pretty scared. I hadn't heard anything like that. Before I could think too much about it, I saw it. I don't remember a ton of detail, honestly. It was running from my left to my right, really fast. I'm certain it was running upright, very tall and brown. I couldn't make out any more detail. It was kind of a blur. Just as I watched it leave my view, I heard a really loud crack. And after it was gone, I realized that it had run right through a really huge branch that was laying at the bottom of the hill. It wasn't like a full grown tree, but it was a branch certainly thick enough that nobody would be able to break it. I don't remember hearing any other sounds besides the stomping and the branch snapping in half. No grunts or screams. I remember turning around and running into my house and hysterically telling my parents. I didn't really know what to expect by telling them, but my dad did go outside with me and told me that he had seen some military helicopters flying around out there all day. Weird. Yeah, some choppers chasing Bigfoots, maybe? The experiment gone wrong. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He sat out there with me for the rest of the day until it got dark, watching the woods and seeing if it would come back. While we were sitting out there, we did see the helicopters fly over several times. Not sure if that has any relevance, but it was kind of strange nonetheless. I don't think I ever went down the hill and investigated. I was kind of scared to go into the woods after that. Shortly after, we moved to Oregon. 
Thank you, man, for that story. Strange, but it just it feels familiar reading his account because it just reminds you of places, memories you have of places when you're young that just seem sort of magical. People walking out with bleeding hands Stra- and seeing <laughs> bipedal <laughs> tall entities running left and right. Right, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it reminds me of those window areas where like there could exactly. just be an energy there. Maybe that a uh, hunter, maybe he was visited by a forest, or that hunter, the guy with the, what, he had a hacksaw? A hacksaw, He was going to cut down a tree and the tree spirit was like, not, not today, buddy, and he saw it his own hand. You know, it's probably what happened. It could be. It could be one of those one of those areas that just has that energy, or it could have been an accident. He was rejected. He was rejected. Yes, yes. <laughs> just like Carla's story. Yeah, it just reminds me of places like Skinwalker Ranch that we talk about. Those places where it just seems like there's an amalgamation of different paranormal phenomena that may or may not. I mean, yeah, of course he's young. Who knows? But uh, it's interesting. It's colorful story. What was so. that with Linda Godfrey? Was that Jackson County or Jefferson County? That yeah. area where all of those oh, from the Dogman episode. Had, yeah, our last Dogman episode, they had all those like werewolf attacks over decades, but then they also had like winged creatures, right. lake monsters. There's a window area. Yeah. Right. And the, I mean, not to say that this is necessarily that, but, but uh, it could be. There are areas like that out there. Absolutely. So thank you for that contribution. All right. So this next one, after the accident, this comes from Shannon. I've had more than a few strange experiences in my life, but here's a paranormal one that is really close to my heart. My sophomore year of high school, early 90s, every year for the opening day of trout season in April, I would get up early and go fish with my cousin near his home. It was a Friday night when something woke me up early, around 3 a.m. I was freezing cold. I remember even looking at my clock. It was way too early. I had a heated water bed. I was so cold I thought my heater had died. I checked it, it was fine. I even turned it up. I grabbed an extra blanket and tried to go back to bed. Usually when I was younger, nothing could wake me short of a bomb going off. I finally fell back to sleep and woke up the next day to go fishing. Around noon, we went back to my cousin's house to eat lunch and warm up. We were watching the 12 o'clock news on TV when a story came up about a fatal car accident in Erie. Although the car was slightly out of contrast to see, they were zoomed in on a gray British night high-top sneaker laying on the road. Between seeing the gray car on its side and the shoe, my heart sank, even before they said who it was. One of my closest friends, Greg, I knew it was his shoe and his car. They announced his name and that two other girls had been killed in the crash. Another girl survived. They wrecked and rolled the car early Saturday morning around 2.30 a.m. or so. Not for a few years after did I start to correlate that it was Greg coming to see me that morning and that his presence is what made me so cold. It had always made me feel good that he came to see me. Fast forward about three years I was in a paranormal forum on Facebook when another high school friend that was in it as well encouraged me to share my experience in a post, so I did. Much to my surprise, I got a comment from a girl who said she was the survivor. In a personal message, she told me she still remembers that morning laying in the ER on a bed, barely awake, when her best friend, Greg's girlfriend, came to her at her bedside. She said she could make her out in the room telling her they were all okay and everything was going to be fine. Then she disappeared. This really reinforced what I always felt, that Greg did stop by to say goodbye, in a way. It's crazy how, after all these years, we both had found each other to discover what had happened to the other that day. That gave me chills reading that. Yeah. So, yeah, corroboration that the one survivor that she hadn't talked to in years or didn't know had the same experience basically those who passed visiting people that were close to them to say we're okay. Yeah, so basically what happened was she was looking forward to going fishing one evening, goes to bed, and then she's woken up at 3 a.m. by just freezing cold air. She has, it's crazy that she has this heated water bed, just freezing cold. She thinks it's broken, checks it, it's fine. She turns it up anyway. And then the next day she goes fishing, comes back, and then turns on the news at her friend's house and she sees what she recognizes, uh, a car kind of blurry in the background and then a shoe highlighted. And you know it's your friend's it's shoe. It's your friend's shoe. Yeah. She knows immediately that's who died. It was her friend. And she eventually chalks up like that cold feeling in the room as her friend visiting or mm-hmm. the woke up at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. makes sense. I mean, we hear that all oh, the time. that's true. I forgot about that. It, it was at 3 a.m. Yeah. And then the crazy part being that she posts about it years later in a forum and then someone says, oh, I was the survivor in that group. And when I was in the hospital recovering, one of those that died in that wreck came to see me. It was, it was Greg, her friend, who came to visit her, she thinks. It was Greg's girlfriend that came to visit her, basically saying, like, we're all okay. We're that's so crazy. On. Comforting in a way amidst the tragedy. That's, that's an insane experience. Yeah. 
And I think that's what's something that we, I mean, if you had to have some sort of encounter amidst a tragedy would be that sort of like hopeful message at the end. Yeah. Yeah. A little silver lining. Last message. It is, there's something so tragic too about young death like that. Like when it's something yeah. that's uh, so traumatic and sudden, mm-hmm. you know, but it's nice that in this story, it's like those that did pass. Yeah. We're able to come back and say they're okay. Yeah. Send the word. Which is a pretty common occurrence. I mean, when it comes to this sort of paranormal, like the visitations either right before death or after death to loved ones or to, to friends. And especially to tell the survivor. If you guys yeah. die, will you come visit me? I will try my hardest. <laughs> <laughs> You'll come wake me up in the morning like I used to do I will do come you. and yeah. uh, terrify John, you. John, I'm in the ceiling. Yeah. I'll just tap on your ceiling all the time. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a real haunt. But uh, but yeah, no, that that's, I mean, it's a great story. And to tell the survivor mm-hmm. that specific, yeah. you know, like it's like you were with us. We want you to know. You know, that we all, oh, like, we're right. okay. You know, because a lot of people have the survivor's guilt, the last only person that survives. Like, oh, that's true, yeah. cool that happened to. Very tragic, but it's, yeah, it's nice that they could have that experience. And, and thank you so much for sending that in. Sorry about your friend, Greg. Tragic story. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think we have time to do one more. Okay, we'll do this one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, this next story is pretty great. This is, comes from uh, Shani. Yeah, right? this is pretty funny. Or Shani. Or Shani. I'm not sure how you say it. Sorry. It's a good one to wrap up with, I think, to lighten the mood at the end of the episode. This is called The Devil's Lettuce. I'd like to share something that happened about three weeks ago. One night I smoked a bit of Devil's Lettuce so I could go to bed. Haven't we all? And I heard really loud noises downstairs in the main area. Devil's lettuce. Me and my roommates rarely make noise that the others can hear, so I thought it was odd and went downstairs. A light was turned on and our front door was unlocked, which was weird because we're all really good at locking doors and turning the lights off. <laughs> Sorry, I just pictured she lives in like a mime commune. We rarely make noises that each other can hear. It's so they just walk all the time around each other, just <laughs> oh. super quiet. I was just picturing like a montage of each one locking a door and going, yeah, and high five because <laughs> they're so good at it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're really good at locking so doors good. and turning off lights. That's so great. All right, she continues. A different McFrickin' light was on, and the front door was unlocked again. Nothing was on the floor. Everything else looked very normal. <laughs> WTF, for real. As I'm trying to keep my cool, I hear a door upstairs shut, and then another loud noise. I looked toward the stairs, and there was no light coming from my bedroom. It was in my room. Hmm. Panicking, I built up the courage to run into my room to grab my purse and get the fuck out of there. (laughs) I kept the light on and front door unlocked while I made my sprint. And when I came back, (laughs) the light was off and the front door was locked. Big nope. (laughs) I ran to my car and called my aunt. Or maybe she didn't say aunt. 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 I ran to spell it. (laughs) I ran to my car and called my aunt. I prefaced with, what is she called? Like her pet aunt. Oh boy! I don't know why they popped into my head. <laughs> you Sorry. had some devil's lettuce, didn't you, John? Like A-N-T. Yeah, she's I called just my like, aunt. Hello, aunt. You must grow bigger and help me. Just cut that out. Yeah, it's not <laughs> great. <laughs> I prefaced with, "Quote, hey, so uh, I'm high, but like I'm not really, really high to where I could be hallucinating. I don't even think you can hallucinate. And I know it could be making my experience more intense, but something is in my house, and I don't know what to do." That was very honest with your aunt. She calms me down, and I can hear my uncle in the background getting ready to come pick me up. Our family has always been sensitive to paranormal and the supernatural, and once he picked me up, he said he knew immediately it wasn't someone who broke into my house, and he could tell it was supernatural, and it wasn't going to leave me alone if I stayed. Spooky. That is spooky. He stopped at a gas station to grab me munchies. What a homie. (laughs) That's awesome. And I slept over at their house, but it didn't end there at all. And then she goes on to say, if we want to know more, just get back to her. Sounds like she has more stories. But I do want to know what happens after. She says, let me know if you want to know what happened after my uncle saved me from the ghosties. <laughs> I'd love to share. <laughs> so yeah, that, I love, she had a very colorful way of writing. I like that. Yeah. I want to know what munchies she got. That's what I'm really Probably some cheese its Are you hungry, Chris? cheese its some, uh, some Doritos, some candy. Funyuns? <laughs> what was your favorite high food, John, back in the day when you used to get high? Yeah, it's been a while. Um... Don't do drugs, kids. I'm mean, I was never a mun- like a Munchies like junk food person. So. Really? But well, well, okay, so what you oh, would maybe do, a long time you ago? You became one now. <laughs> it's like it was Reese's cups on the or show when you're not high, you're eating like sour cream triscuits. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't like get high and go get munchies though very often. Really? Mm-hmm. So what would you so you had no there was no like I wasn't really a munchie person. So what would you do when you get high? Stretch. 
I just would a lot stretch. Of, a lot of stretching. <laughs> I'd work on a lot of audio stuff okay. and go for runs. Man, why can't I be? I would get high all the time if it like made me just more productive. And it's weird because marijuana is a very it, it definitely affects people differently. For me, it was a very like. I could either be really creative with it or it really ground me in a way where like it was kind of almost anxiety producing. So mm-hmm. it would make me want to do something intense, like run oh, or right, stretch. Oh, right, to kind of to get that out yeah, of you. Yeah, to almost like re-ground myself. It, yeah, it's kind of weird that it works like that. Like it also makes, it would make me very aware of like health things, like wanting to treat my body better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're very know. acutely aware of like how things are like operating in your body. Like yeah, I'm already, you if can I had feel like, pain. Yeah, if I had a back pain, it was like, I think my I have spinal disease. That's why know? it was always really felt good to stretch because I could really pinpoint the areas I felt tight. You do have a, it does heighten your senses with your physical self, mm-hmm. and especially edibles, it seems like. Devil's lettuce. My, Devil's my lettuce. experience is like looking back on it, I think the majority of, like when I was really young, I had some really memorable, like good experiences, almost psychedelic experiences on it. Um, but most of my older memories are just like, you mean more recently? Why did I do this? I do not feel good right now. Really? Yeah, it, it definitely. Just like I had a lot of paranoia and a lot of like, uh, like the focus on pain, that kind of stuff, which is weird because it's supposed to be the it opposite. Very, but, it can be very intense where it yeah. definitely, you know, can bring up a lot of anxiety. Or just like the inability to really know how to interact in a, in an oh, environment. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had friends who were like, well, let's go to Walmart. I'm like, what? Fluorescent lights and people? No. No. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. I, I had a friend, Jared. Jared. He and Jared, if you're listening. Uh, I remember going to order his house. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And I haven't smoked in like a year or two or more. And we got back from California. And I'm talking to him. It's like, hey, you want to you wanna smoke? I'm like, yeah, okay. We're not, we just were hanging out here tonight. And he's like, yeah. So we smoke. And he's like, all right, you want to go to the bar? Like, no, I don't want to go to the bar. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm super high at this point. And then, of course, we go to the bar. And I'm just like, I remember walking in there and just like, <laughs> my eyes are just bloodshot and super wide. I'm just Bing. looking at everyone like a deer in headlights. Yeah. Making my way to the bathroom, thinking like, how long can I be, like calculating, how long can I be in here before people notice I'm gone? Like trying to let <laughs> right. it pass and just getting like double drinks. Oh, that so sounds I can, awful. Yeah, no, thanks. It, it turned out to be a great night. Yeah, after you got over the, probably once you get a certain amount of alcohol in you, you felt fine. I hope Jared's boss doesn't listen. <laughs> we didn't smoke anymore. None of us yeah, do. none really. of us are in that world anymore. Anyway, kids, don't do drugs uh, unless it's legal in your state. Yeah. That way we can't be we're held getting, liable. We're getting closer. <laughs> we're getting closer. It's medical here, I think. You know, do it if you can get away with it. That's Jeremy saying it. All right. If it's good for you, not if it's a bad Just drug. And if you're okay. a kid, yeah, never mind. That's enough. Time, time to adults here. Welcome to go Are back you? to the I don't ceiling. know if there's many kids listening to the show. There's some. A lot of young families with young kids. That's true. That's true. Listen to your parents, kids. Don't listen to us. It's, it's, anyway, it's, it starts in the home. The I'm going back to the ceiling. <laughs> anyway, you know what's natural? Great stories from people like you. Yay! So thank you for sending yes. in these awesome stories. And swimming. Swimming is also a natural high. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Contribution. For most of these stories. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Swimming, too. Hiking. Hiking is? Badminton. Mm-hmm. A, a good game of chess. Mm-hmm. A good game of wrestling with a, a sibling or a close friend. Weird. A wrestling, weird uncle. Wrestling is weird. Yeah, wrestling. <laughs> yeah, not not as a sport. Just skin contact wrestling is just a high. when you're with your friends. Just a little grapple, grapple. Yeah, a little grappling, <laughs> a little pop, head popple. You know, you just pop on the head. And Jeremy, little, get little back in the ceiling. All right, guys, I'm going back up in the ceiling. I'm climbing up. I'm climbing up. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, if you want to see Jeremy again Bye. soon, or want to hear Jeremy again soon, go ahead and check out the expansion episode. Yeah, the sign expansion. up. Sign up for Patreon if you haven't yet to hear uh, whatever weird cockamamie stuff Jeremy's got going on. It's gonna be awesome. All right, we gotta go. All right. Oh, Rick, Sir Rick. Uh, your your stingers coming next episode, awesome. and, to, and to all the other stingers that still haven't been done, I'm very sorry, but they take a long time to do because I don't want to just put out crap. Right. Right. And with everything else going on, my work and the show, it's it's really a challenge to to just pop them out. But they're on the way. Like, yep. If you're still on the list, it will happen at some point. You may not be listening to the show anymore, but it will come. <laughs> That's a gleeful guarantee. <laughs> Yeah, amen to that. Thank you for your patience. It's coming, and uh, we will list our new patrons next episode when we have more accumulated. Yep. Make that more fun. All righty. All right, guys. Uh, we will talk to you in a little Merry bit. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, we'll see you before yeah, Christmas. But in case they don't listen to the next episode in time. All right, guys. We love Get you. Get in the ceiling. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs>